I'm going to talk about how to estimate uncertainty. So let's say that we have computed a result such as a pose from image data and we want to estimate now the uncertainty in this answer. So uh, I'm going to go through how to do that but here is a paper that um, focused on this topic that we published in 2000. So first I'm going to review some statistics on mean and variance. So we have a random variable x, in that case it might be a measurement, and we have a sample of values x1 through xn. We can estimate its mean or expected value by the usual formula for average. You sum up all the values and divide by n. Or we can also estimate its variance by taking the mean essentially of the uh, difference of each value with the mean squared. And if we take the, stan the standard deviation or the square root of the variance, that's a good measure of the variability of our random variable. So assuming that our uh, probability density of x was Gaussian, then the it would follow a uh, normal bell-shaped curve like this. So a we would expect that the probability that a new value of x would lie between minus sigma and plus sigma would be about 68%. If we have two variables, x and y, then we have a covariance matrix, uh, Cxy. And the values for the elements of that covariance matrix are um, the variance of the x values, the variance of the y values, and then this is the cross covariance of x and y or you can write that as the expected value of x minus the mean of x times that quantity transposed, where x of course is just um, the vector x, y. Writing that out is uh, would look like this. We'd have uh, the vector x minus x, uh, the mean of x, and the value transposed, and we bring the expected values, the ex expectation operator inside each of the matrices. So we would eventually get up eventually get this covariance matrix CXY. This is um, just wanted to point out what um, that covariance matrix um, the values of it indicate. If the off diagonal elements are close to zero that means that the uh, the, the values of the random variable are are independent in their dimensions. If the off diagonal elements are uh, large, that means that those co-vary together. In other words, where x uh, is large, then y also is positive and large and so forth. So let's look at a function of a random variable. So if I have a random variable x and y and a function f of x, y of those two, and I want to find the uncertainty in z given the uncertainty in x and y. So a simple case would be um, well, let's say just one random variable where I have z equals ax. So uh, the mean then would be just um, 1 over n uh, axi, summing over i. And since a is a constant, I just bring it out, so I get sum over xi, which is the mean. The uh, variance now um, similarly, I can calculate using AXI, uh, and the mean I said was uh, A mu X. So again, I bring A out, and I get um, I get uh, 1 over N times X sub I minus mu X squared, which is um, sigma sub x squared. A little more complicated function, let's say I have a sum of two random variables z equals x plus y. Uh, you can easily show that the mean is not going to be uh, the mean of x plus the mean of y. And this now, the variance of z will be um, x sub i plus y sub i minus the mean of z which is mu x plus mu y 
that whole thing squared. And I can group these this way. I could say this is x sub i minus mu x minus, uh, I'm sorry, plus um, y sub i minus mu y. And multiplying those out, I would get it is um, xi minus mu x squared plus yi minus mu y squared plus 2 times xi minus mu x yi minus mu y. And that reduces to um, sigma sub x squared plus sigma sub y squared plus 2 and this quantity is the cross covariance uh, sigma sub xy. Um, take an example uh, we looked at disparity stereo disparity recall was the difference in the x uh, coordinate of the right and left images so if those are two random variables there and say they're independent then using the formula on the previous page we can show that it's just um, the sum of the variances of the right and the left plus their cross covariance here so if they really are independent then um, this is zero and um, if if um, the sigmas are equal to one then this is just one squared plus one squared or two so I would get that the standard deviation of the disparity would be in this case the square root of two let's look at the general case so I have a vector x and a vector function f which returns a vector z so the covariance of z is defined as this and I can also write that as the expected value of that quantity or if I interpret this as an error or deviation in z from its mean I'll call that delta z so that's my independent variable that I'm trying to estimate the covariance of so it's going to be difficult to compute the uncertainty analytically in some cases, but we can always compute it using a numerical estimate. So the way we would do that is by taking our function z equals f of x and taking the derivative of each side. So we would get delta z equals j delta x, where j is the Jacobian matrix of the function f. So it's the matrix of the derivatives. So the covariance of z then is the expected value of z, delta z, delta z transpose. Plugging in what delta z is, I get j delta x and j delta x transpose. Recall that the transpose of a product of matrices is the product of the transposes, but, but reversed. So um, that leads us to j delta x, delta x transpose, j transpose. Now j is, a, is not a random variable here, only the delta x's are random variables. So I can bring the j's outside this expectation operator and I just get this, um, which is the covariance of x. So let's take an example estimating the uh, stereo Z error. So recall that for aligned cameras the Z value of a point is the focal length times the baseline distance divided by the disparity D. So if that's a function F of X where X is F, B, and D then the Jacobian of um, that function is the partials of Z with respect to these different quantities. So that's uh, let's see, the derivative with respect to f would be b over d, with respect to b would be f over d, and with respect to d would be minus f b over d squared. So in this case we can we can calculate the Jacobian analytically pretty easily. Okay, so 
now let's we still need to know the uncertainty in our inputs um, in F, B, and D. So we can um, take that as uh, the expected values of um, delta F, delta B, delta D, and then times the transpose of that. And since the um, cross covariances are zero, we will get just the um, elements along the diagonal here. So we would get um, the standard deviation, the variance, I guess, of the F, the variance of B, and the variance of D with zeros here. Okay, so then if we know those, then we can go ahead and calculate um, the covariance matrix of, of CZ by this matrix multiplication here. And remember that J has to be evaluated at the current value of X. Um, so what is the, the covariance here? We can interpret that as a probability density. So we often um, assume that the probability density has a Gaussian form. So this shows a two-dimensional Gaussian. And the formula for a two-dimensional Gaussian is given by this here. And the, we can look now at the um, contours where the, where the probability is constant. So imagine taking a, a level set, a plane here, and cutting this, this, uh, this lump somewhere um, in its middle. So that, when p is a constant, basically the, the exponent, the value here in the exponent is a constant. And let's say, I'll just call that z squared here. So um, picking different values of z correspond to different contours of that Gaussian. So that's the equation of an ellipse. And to see that, you can look at the case where um, I have uncorrelated errors. So assume that Cx is um, sigma sub x squared, sigma y squared, and zeros. So the inverse of that is 1 over sigma xx and 1 over sigma yy squared. So plugging that in here, I get um, delta x delta y times 1 over sigma xx squared, 1 over sigma yy squared times delta x delta y. So multiplying that out, you would get, whoops, you would, you would get this uh, equation right here. So we can choose z to get the desired probability, to enclose whatever probability we want. So for example, for the value 3, we would enclose about 97% uh, of the volume of a Gaussian, of a two-dimensional Gaussian. This shows some, also some contours of a Gaussian.